Greetings ladies and gentlemen and welcome to a new episode of Great Books in 10 Minutes. In this episode I will be analyzing Moliere's famous play The Miser. If you would like to watch my summary of The Miser you can find it on the channel or from the links in the description box and the pinned comment. Moliere's play The Miser is a well-regarded theatrical work that humorously critiques the human preoccupation with money and greed. The play centers around Harpagon, a wealthy but miserly man who prioritizes hoarding his wealth above all else. Moliere uses Harpagon's character to demonstrate the negative consequences that an excessive love for money can have on one's life. Harpagon's overwhelming greed causes him to neglect his relationships, resulting in strained connections and a general sense of loneliness and isolation. Moreover, his fixation on protecting his wealth prevents him from enjoying the benefits of his labor, leading him to an unfulfilled and joyless existence. Moliere effectively communicates his message about the hazards of greed and the significance of balance through comedic devices such as exaggeration, irony, and satire. The play exposes the absurdity of Harpagon's behavior and presents a warning for those who may be tempted to prioritize material wealth over other aspects of life. Moliere's play The Miser premiered in 1668 during the reign of King Louis XIV of France. The country was undergoing significant economic and social turbulence as it had recently emerged from a series of wars and was grappling with poverty, inequality and corruption. The play echoes the concerns of French society at that time, particularly the obsession with money and material possessions. Harpagon's character embodies the greed and selfishness that characterized the upper echelons of French society, with his miserly conduct seen as a symptom of a broader issue. During the 17th century, the concept of a middle class in France was not yet fully developed as it is understood today. However, there was a growing population of wealthy merchants, professionals and artisans who were beginning to attain social and economic status that was not based solely on noble birth. This group is sometimes referred to as the bourgeois and is often considered to be the precursor to the modern middle class. Moliere's play The Miser reflects this emerging social group as it contrasts the behaviors and values of the old aristocracy with those of the rising middle class. The Miser also reflects the tensions that existed between the aristocracy and the emerging middle class in France. Harpagon's character is a member of the old aristocracy and his behavior is contrasted with the more virtuous and noble characters of the play who are representatives of the rising middle class. In Moliere's Miser, the characters of Valère, Frosine, Marianne and Cliente embody the values and aspirations of a new class of French society that emerged during the 17th century. They are characterized by their ambition, intelligence and sense of morality and are contrasted with the old aristocracy which is depicted as corrupt, self-centered and out of touch with the realities of everyday life. Moliere's play The Miser was met with mixed reactions from both the public and critics during the 17th century. While some saw it as a biting commentary on the moral decay and corruption of the ruling class, others criticized it as vulgar and offensive. Examples of criticisms of the play include those made by Charles Dufresne, a critic who accused Moliere of attacking the morals and traditions of the aristocracy in The Miser, arguing that the play was a dangerous satire that could undermine the foundations of French society. Similarly, the Bishop of Paris criticized the play for its depiction of greed and selfishness, calling it immoral and scandalous, and believed that it promoted a negative view of wealth and encouraged envy and resentment toward the rich. Additionally, a contemporary account from the time describes how some members of the audience were offended by the portrayal of the character Harpagon, who was seen as a caricature of the wealthy upper class. According to this account, some audience members even left the theater in protest during the play's initial run. Despite these criticisms, The Miser went out to become one of Moliere's most successful plays and has since been recognized as a masterpiece of French literature. It is important to note that the controversy surrounding the miser at the time of its release highlights the play's significance as a reflection of the societal tensions and issues of 17th century France. 
In Moliere's play The Miser, the money box that Harpagon buries in his backyard serves as a central symbol that represents his insatiable greed and his desire to hoard his wealth. The money box is not just a significant portion of his wealth, but a manifestation of Harpagon's deepest fears and desires. The money box is a symbol of his control over his finances, and he sees it as the ultimate source of his security. By burying his money in the ground, Harpagon believes that he can protect it from thieves and other dangers and ensure that he will never be left without the means to support himself. In this way, the money box becomes a physical representation of Harpagon's belief that money is the most important thing in the world and his fear of losing his wealth. However, the money box also has deeper implications for Harpagon's character. It represents his alienation from the people around him as his greed has driven a wedge between him and his family. His children, Cleant and Elise, are both desperate for his love and approval, but Harpagon is unable to see beyond his obsession with money. His neglect of his family and friends is shown to be a direct result of his attachment to his wealth, which has caused him to lose sight of what is truly important in life. Despite Harpagon's best efforts to control his fate and destiny by burying his money box, his obsession with wealth ultimately proves to be futile. The money box symbolizes his desire for control and security, but he cannot control the power of destiny that threatens to destroy it. In the end, Harpagon's attempts to protect his money are in vain. The box is discovered and stolen, leaving him alone and powerless. This demonstrates the unpredictability of destiny and the inability of individuals to control every aspect of their lives, no matter how much wealth or power they may possess. Moliere's message in The Miser is clear. While money can certainly provide a level of comfort and security, it is not the only path to a happy and fulfilling life. Rather, it is through fostering genuine human connections and prioritizing meaningful relationships that one can truly find purpose and contentment in life. For Harpagon, everything has a financial worth, including intangible things like love that are typically seen as immeasurable and private. Harpagon's pursuit of Marianne solely for her large dowry exemplifies this perspective on love. In his mind, the financial gain from the relationship outweighs any genuine emotional connection. Furthermore, Harpagon puts a monetary value on everything, and if it is not profitable, he rejects it. This is evident in his opposition to Valer, who genuinely loves Elise, Harpagon's daughter. Harpagon sees Valer as an unsuitable partner for his daughter due to his lack of wealth and prioritizes material gain over his daughter's happiness. The play also explores the power dynamics and conflicts that can arise in romantic relationships. The relationship between Valer and Elise is a prime example as Harpagon's attempts to prevent their union and go as far as threatening to hang Valer highlights the impact of social and economic status on relationships. Additionally, the relationship between Cleant and Marianne showcases the challenges and sacrifices that couples may face in pursuit of love. In Moliere's The Miser, the themes of greed and freedom work in parallel. Harpagon's love for money has made him a prisoner of his own greed, which ultimately creates a significant obstacle in the way of his fulfillment and happiness. He is so preoccupied with protecting his wealth that he fails to enjoy the fruits of his labor, and his excessive greedy behavior has left him trapped in a cycle of selfishness and unhappiness. On the other hand, Harpagon's son, Cleant, recognizes that his father's wealth and influence are not enough to make him happy, and he is willing to risk everything to pursue his love for Marianne. Through his determination, and of course an act of fate considering Monsieur Anselm, Cleant ultimately achieves the freedom to marry the woman he loves and live a happy life. Similarly, Valer seeks freedom from the constraints of his low social status and his dependence on others. He recognizes that his love for Elise and his desire to be with her are more important than his status as a servant, and he is willing to go to great lengths to secure his own financial independence. Through Don Thomas de Alberti's generosity and desire to bring the conflict to an end, Harpagon's power and hold over his children Elise and Cleant diminishes. 
Through Musio and Selm's more humanistic values, the younger characters find happiness with their respective partners. Musio and Selm stands as an ideal of what society should value, character and integrity over wealth and social status. Furthermore, Musio and Selm's character brings about a resolution to the conflicts of the play. His intervention results in reconciliation between the characters and their pursuit of happiness is realized. Harpagon's obsession with wealth and attempts to control the lives of his children are ultimately defeated by the younger character's triumph. The play's ending conveys the message that true happiness can only be achieved by valuing human connection, honesty and kindness over the accumulation of material wealth. We can argue that Monsieur Anselm's character serves as an olive branch to the wealthy class, representing the idea that there are aristocrats who value human connection above money. Anselm is a wealthy merchant who seeks to find a wife based on her virtues rather than her wealth or social status. He values character over material wealth and tells Elise that he would rather have a wife with a modest dowry and an honest heart than all the riches in the world with a heart that's false and disgusting. Deceitful. Very well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me in this literary journey. I hope you found my analysis both enjoyable and thought-provoking. I strive to offer a unique, out-of-the-box perspective on the subjects I explore, acknowledging that they may differ from mainstream interpretations. Remember, you don't have to accept everything I have shared. These are simply my personal thoughts, shaped by years of learning and passion for literature. If you would like to support the channel, consider becoming a member liking, sharing, and subscribing, your engagement helps keep this literary conversation alive. Until next time, keep reading and exploring the world of words.